Hi, my name is Marie Kalzer and I'm in preservation and I'm here to talk to you about what we can do in preservation to extend the life of a book and also to give you some resources to help you in that case also. Um, I have uh, several handouts for you today uh, which you should have um, the monograph treatments and this form lists specific treatments according to the condition of the book and we sort incoming materials into um, if it goes to the book repair unit or if it goes to the bindery preparation unit. And I also have for you on the verso is um, good collection maintenance points to remember. And this is just a list of points that you can read at, at your leisure. Uh, um, just a few things that you can do to help extend the life of a book. And then I also have the Gaylord Preservation Pathfinder number four. And this is um, an introduction to book repair and it gives you background information about what we do in the field of preservation to repair books. And it also has a, a list of diagrams for you. And inside of it is the Damage Materials Treatment Option Form which is what you use to send materials into us. Now, we can repair almost anything you send to us, but we do take into consideration a number of points. One is the use of the material, and this is where the um, damaged materials treatment option form comes into play. Uh, we need you to check on here if, it's gonna be a, if it is a temporary repair or a long-term repair. And we do assume that the materials that you send to us have been reviewed by a, a selector or a librarian. And um, you can order this form through the uh, rec form. Another consideration is the value of the material, if it's um, considered rare or intrinsically valuable. We um, look at not only the, the uh, binding, but the um, um, text and, and the content. And the other thing we take into consideration is the condition of the material. If we, if, if, if we consider a material is too damaged to repair, we will send it back to you. And if, um, if you send it to us as a temporary repair and we feel it needs to go to the bindery, we will also send it back to you because um, we will not expend the time and the cost that it takes to rebind a book at the bindery. Along with all of this, we consider the cost of the repair or the cost of binding. This is, the, this is factored into all these other principles. Okay, I have um, for you here examples of m kinds of materials that we just cannot do anything about. Um, and we can repair a lot, but there's some that we just can't handle. Um, these include too many torn pages, too much tape, eaten up by a dog, there's jelly donut stuff over all, you know, books, too bent out of shape, uh, marked throughout with mold. Uh, as you know, mold grows, so if a book is moldy, it's not good to keep in the collection. Now, this book falls into one of those categories, as you can see. Um, if we had all the time in the world and all the money in the world, we could not get this book back to its ori original shape. This is a compact shelving loss, I should say. Um, so we cannot do anything about this one. Sad to say. It won't even stand up on its own. Um, the other ones, um, paperbacks like this, uh, you know, it may not look that bad to you, but you try to open it and read it like this, and you may think that we can put it in a press and um, flatten it out, but that, that, that does not happen uh, that easily. So materials like this, and I think another compact shelving problem, uh, again, we cannot um, flatten this. Um, even if we immersed it in water, it wouldn't come back to its original shape. 
we also do get uh, things that come in, um, for instance, uh, that are marked up a lot. And this is one here. Somebody painstakingly took a pen or a pencil and marked through every little word. Um, we, you know, there's nothing we can do about uh, ink marks. Um, pencil marks can be erased, but we're not going to spend the time erasing all of these. Um, and of course, uh, mold, moldy books. I won't take this out of the bag, but um, this, uh, this is moldy, moldy throughout. And these are best to be replaced, replaced so the mold does not spread. All right, um, there's also materials that we consider too brittle. And brittle, um, you may not be, be able to tell if a book is brittle. It may be yellow and you may think, well, the, the pages are yellow and it might be brittle or it might, the pages may look in perfect condition to you, but they may be brittle. If it fails a double fold test where you fold it back and forth a few times, it, um, it is brittle. For instance, this wreck of a book here, you may think, well, if, if the pages weren't all torn, um, it would be fine. But in fact, this is brittle. If I fold this corner back a few times, it'll come off. So uh, we cannot really do much about brittle books. If you need to keep them in the collection, we can uh, have a phase box made f for them or um, a clamshell box. So uh, f that's the case with this one here. This, this is a brittle book, and we sent the measurements to the bindery, and the bindery made a phase box for it. And so it, it will keep in the collection. Uh, somebody can handle it, but it is pretty fragile, and it's too fragile to circulate. I have um, a truck here of books. Um, this is basically a before and after. Uh, when materials come in, um, they, as you can tell, they look, you know, ratty um, and worn, uh, which is what I'd like to advise is to, to catch the damage early when you're out there weeding. If you see materials that are worn and um, do feel like they need some help, please send them to preservation. And also, don't just look at the outside. You can, uh, like for instance, this book, it looks fine from the outside, but if you look on the top, you can see that all the pages are really not, not together. And this is a adhesive binding. It's a failed adhesive binding. It's from the publishers. And what has happened is the adhesive has, has given away from the pages itself. So we will send this to the bindery, and they will put on a new case like this. And they will also use adhesive that it's called polyvinyl acetate, and it, and it has plasticizers inside of it that makes it make it flexible, as opposed to some of the publishers' bindings have adhesive that tends to crack over time. We also um, uh, small small pamphlet type books. This is an old Dura cover with all the tape. What we will do with that is we will put a pan binder on it. So this is an example of that. And of course, you know, with spines, uh, the, the case in poor condition, we will send to the bindery and that will be given a new case. Older materials down here. Um, this is, uh, if, if there are some older materials that um, have fairly nice cases and the painting um, marbling on the foredge. We will, we will not send this to the bindery. We will hinge on the, the uh, cover. And I have one here where it's 
hinged on, we'll put Japanese paper here. And also, um, if you see paperbacks that you know are going to be used uh, over and over in the collection, uh, please send them to us before they're all worn out, and we can send them for a permabind, as you'll recognize the permabind cover here. Um, it's, it's better to, to catch damage early, especially also if there are pages that tend to fall out. Um, and that, that will prevent the pages from being lost and from the staff having to spend time uh, photocopying and find replacement pages. Um, we do a fair amount of tipping in pages. These are, they, they come to us like this and, and we tip them in. Um, and if this is, this should be replaced, and actually, it's a, it is a temporary repair. The only thing we can do with this is just tape it, tape it, tape it to death. Basically, that's what we do. Um, all right. Well, other than stressing that you should catch damage early, um, I encourage you to feel free to call me or any any of my staff. Um, with any questions you have at any time. We do have a staff of two full-time book repairs and in the bind repair area, one full-time person and then two part-time pages that help in both areas. So please feel free to call and also stop by if you're in the area. Thank you. <laughs>